That's me, out in New York, with 150 Yanks chanting my name. Craig, 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 Craig. Of course, that's not my real name. That's just how Americans pronounce the word crack, which is one third of my rap name, Crack by Mental. But I'm not caught up in the semantics of it all. I just think it's pretty impressive how a lad that was living on disability in Cork City is now out in New York, a fucking rock star. Of course, it happened so quick. I saw I was getting a buzz online, but as you know with the internet, few things have a lifespan beyond 50 hours, so once I saw that I was accumulating what people would consider clout, I uh, realized I needed to go out to the States ASAP and do a US tour. So I got my fans to help fund the trip out there and what was just an idea a month before became a full-on US tour packed out venues all across the states. Well, all across as in Boston, New York and Chicago. But yeah, pretty cool. Of course there was going to be an inevitable crash once I got back to Ireland and I'm not on about the plane, I'm on about Mentally, it's hard to go from being treated like a rock star in the States to people acting like you're not shit when you get back to your country, when people don't book you for gigs and leave you off all the festival lists. But by this stage, I pretty much learned to accept it. I had some other shit, some really serious shit that put me back, kind of took me off course for where, where I was heading last summer went through a couple tragic events. It put me in a place where I just didn't want to make music anymore. I felt as though, you know, if I've toured the States and I'm still getting no recognition in Ireland, I'm still not being funded in Ireland, then really what's the point in all this, you know? So I just didn't want to make music anymore. I just want to use the relevancy that I gained to try and, uh, get income off it because I I felt like with my music I'd kind of taken it as far as I could. But saying you're finished with something that's taken up a big part of your life for nearly a decade is much easier said than done. So come January of this year, the music bug hit me again. But I didn't just want to make any sort of music, I wanted to make an album for myself. You can get taken off track very easily as an artist with algorithms, constantly trying to keep up with algorithms to stay relevant. But um, I think what I've learned this year is that making music that you're proud of and making and putting effort and time into a personal project is worth way more than getting a bunch of likes. When I first started making music, like I wanted to be like a pasty, big L, AZ or Nas, you know? Till I looked around at the rest of Irish hip hop and realized Shit, everyone's trying to be a pasty Big L, Nas or Tupac, so I was just like, yeah, what, what can I really add to this scene, so As time went by, you know, I kind of, my interest in hip-hop evolved beyond just the whole spiritual miracle individual kind of New York style of 90s hip-hop and Eminem, etc. And I started getting into more Memphis kind of hip-hop where it didn't seem like the lyrics were taken as serious, but the sound was just more creative. I really loved the production of Memphis hip hop. So that's kind of why I wanted this album to kind of reflect that. This new album, Artistic Legend 2, is just, it's so Memphis influenced and you can hear it even in the vocal shops and the production. Something I'd make peace with uh, before making this album is that it probably wasn't going to hit as much as maybe my last few projects over the last few years have because um, I think when you make a statement more than an actual song it's always going to reach more people like if you look at a song like trans people are my friends like that's there's no artistic excellence there that's just a song sang in a goofy voice but the message is real like the message is powerful and that's what took that song to the next level but I think I wanted to challenge myself more artistically on this project, Autistic Legend 2, even if that didn't translate into uh, a, as far a reach as uh, some of my past projects have. 
You know, I see a lot of people uh, stressing their heads out as to whether I take myself serious or don't. And the reality is, whether I'm making a funny track about Tato's or make, screaming my head off about trans rights or making a more serious album about being autistic and being on disability and the struggles of being autistic. The only thing that stays consistent within my music is I'm doing what the fuck I want to do. And people can have their opinions. Some might even be kind enough to support it. But at the end of the day, I'm not sitting there dictating my music towards different people's opinions because people are always going to project and yeah some people think i take myself too serious in the past people thought i didn't take myself serious enough At the end of the day i don't give a shit have your opinions i'm gonna do me and i really enjoyed making this album artistic legend too and the first track i nearly quit Pretty much sums up what I've been saying, you know. Just being rejected by the industry after achieving and accomplishing so much just put me in a position where I was ready to quit music, feeling like I'd accomplished everything. But also, I wanted this song with the Shaka Khan sample to be powerful. Like, I wanted to, if this was going to be the first song I made in a year, I wanted to come in hard. So that's why I came in, and I think this track is, is fire, but, uh, you can be the judge of that yourselves. Running like a flash on my own cash. Hate me, slay me, but I come back. Nearly quit the shit. I've been making this. But the shitty industry don't think I'm legit. That's why I'm With the second track, Antisocial, that's a song really about how maybe it's because I'm getting older, my hair's getting a bit grayer, but I'm kind of past trying to explain to people about my disability of autism. I'm over trying to be extra nice, trying to overcompensate. And that's why on this song, I'm just not taking any more nonsense. Like, it's just a song about not giving a fuck anymore about whether I come across rude. Because when I first got my autism diagnosis at 19, you know, I, I used to get in a lot of conflict before that. And, you know, I wanted to kind of tell people once I got the autism diagnosis I tried to appeal to people's better nature that look I'm autistic I struggle in this area but you know what that didn't make a difference if anything people treat me worse after I did that so this song is kind of out of rebellion it's saying you know what fuck you I'm autistic and I'm rude and I'm not rude because I'm autistic I'm rude because I don't fuck with you Ayo, move, live, fuck, move, live, fuck, move Bitch, I'm anti-social, I don't fuck with you dudes I'm a bad fiend with a bad attitude Now that ain't the autism, bitch, I'm just rude so The next song, 203, is a slower kind of song, but um I think the message of it is deep, you know, it's a song about being on disability and the struggles of it. And I was really frustrated last year when they brought in a basic income scheme for artists where the scheme was like 350 euro for artists as opposed to disability which up till only two years ago was only 203 and that to me is crazy because you're putting you're putting people's interests of making music and art above people's survival rate above disabled people's surviving and that to me is just trash so i went back and forth with people on twitter you know the sives and ifas you know the college kids who have fuck all life experience on anything you know in college through daddy and mommy's money but you know i went back and forth with them on twitter about how people shouldn't be getting money for a basic income scheme to do art if disabled people are only getting 203 that's just my opinion on it and guess what it turns out that the basic income scheme didn't work for disabled artists anyway so yeah that that just proved my point but, but i aspire to more than being on a basic income scheme or disability for the rest of my life i'm not i want to be rich i want to make it big because i deserve to make it big because my talent at this music shit my marketing at this music shit far exceeds the amount of money that i get off it so yeah, I, I don't want no basic income scheme or disability and that's what this song is about Cause I don't know what you heard about me But I ain't living off 203 I want fast cash and luxury Living the life of a real life street And I 
the psycho crack the fourth song is it's just really a it's a lot of bravado but it's a lot of fun as well it's just i wanted a more fun track on the album and i think i actually love the beat on this that i produced the vocal sample uh goes really well on it and it's just an album like I think I'm the greatest Irish rapper of all time, but not just Irish. I think I'm the greatest rapper in the world of all time, you know, and that might seem egotistical, but when I look at my music, I wouldn't say it's the most technically proficient or whatever, but I would say it's definitely the most interesting. It's the most groundbreaking in many ways. Like there's a lot of Irish rappers and they're, they're popular in an Irish context, but whether I be in South Sudan, Lithuania, Chile, Ireland, I'd still be rare. I'd still blow up on the net because I have that vision. I'm just good with the hooks like that. So that's what Psycho Crack is about. Go David Grimey for show. I be grimy on the low. Grab a rapper by the toe. Smash his head to the floor. All that gaga little shit. Who these fiends wanna go? But they won't say shit when I slack them little toes. And I Next song is about gambling. And as I said, you know, I kind of crashed and burned last year after the tour. Had a lot of personal tragedies in my life, you know. And music used to be an escape but i'd kind of done everything with music so next up is alcohol and gambling you know they're they help you feel present and you know gambling it's kind of i think with football bets and stuff i find them easy i think they're very easy to win but it's when it's 2 or 3 a.m in the middle of the night and all the football's over and basketball season's over you know that's when the casinos are there and Nothing ever good comes out of being in casinos, but they help you keep present and keeps negative thoughts off your mind. So that's what the gambler song is about. And I just hate, I hate gambling companies. I hate Paddy Power. I call him a bitch on that song. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what the gambler song is about. Betting all day, gambling all night, big money plays, till I feel right. I'm the gambler. Yeah, I'm the gambler. I don't give a fuck is a song, well, as it says on the tin, about not giving a fuck. I've had a lot of right wingers attack me over the last year, you know, for my stance on trans rights. And, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, they'll find somebody else to pick on in 48 hours. So I don't I don't give a damn if they're all on Twitter crying about me, that Ian Miles Chong prick, you know, going on about me online and talking shit about me. I don't care. You know, I, I, I say the reason why I stand by trans rights and why I respect trans people is because the same people that will bully trans people are the same people that will bully autistic people. You know, they're right wingers who are fatigued by the idea that people are expressing themselves more. And so the only way they can tackle that inner fatigue is by pointing it outwards and just spewing hatred. So that's what the song Trans People Are My Friends is about. This song is also about, you know, on the flip side, I'm sick of being put on a pedestal as well when, you know, people people aren't putting money in my pocket and maybe that sounds shallow, but it's like you can get 200,000 comments talking about, oh, you're, you're a legend, you're amazing, but then it's like I drop an album and it's the same 50 or 60 people that bought my album before I got big online that are buying my album now so it's kind of like you know if you respect somebody and you respect what i do and you respect what i fight for then maybe support me that's all i'm saying got these dopey right wingers all out of whack mad because i said i got some friends that are trans mad because they're stuck in a world that expands while well, they're stuck in the past and can't understand i ain't no inspiration porn for none of you pricks if you put me on a pedestal then pay me bitch the next track learner i feel is actually a very important track and it's a groundbreaking track in a lot of ways because i don't see a lot of rappers that would be brave enough to be like oh yeah i'd learning difficulties in school you know everybody wants to act like cool and you know just the greatest but i just wanted like to acknowledge the struggle that many students across the world feel you know when they don't fit into the school system and how they're more susceptible to give in to drugs and alcohol instead of focusing on the schoolwork so that's what the track learner is about wow wow head up in the clouds wow wow and i ain't coming down I don't learn that way, I just disengage 
I don't correlate, I disassociate Wow, wow, head up in the clouds Wow, wow, and I ain't coming down The last song on the album before the bonus track is amazing and it's a track just, you know, acknowledging everything I achieved in the music industry despite being blackballed, despite not, give, not being given any opportunities and just acknowledging that it's pretty amazing everything that I achieved. And, you know, it's, it's got some wild lines in there. You know, I use the R word and the S word, but I feel like because that's the life I've lived, I'm entitled to say those words. So, yeah, that's what that song is. And it's just been like, you know, a lot of people think you can fall off if you're not getting likes or you're not getting views but the reality is you can only fall off when you start making music that's not true to yourself and while I'm making music that I enjoy that I love doing you know I can never fall off so you know going forward I might make just serious projects like Autistic Legend 2 and yeah that's, maybe that's just my music career going forward and I make m money other ways Ask me if I give a fuck Hell nah, I give no fuck Fast cash, big bucks Mad spaz, living lush This is recharge music Won't hear it in the club But it hits you like a drug On that neuro wavy buzz Man, I use And the song Bad Attitude The bonus track Is just about, you know I've got a reputation of having a bad attitude When in reality all I've done is told a few gatekeepers to go fuck off But, you know, I get... I get called that I have a bad attitude because I stand by left-wing values as well and stand by trans rights and, you know, I'm not one of those people that'll just sit there and take shit, like, I'll stand up for myself and that can get you under the term bad attitude, but that's what this song is about, embracing that people say I have a bad attitude, but I don't think I do, I think I'm everything, that, everything I've fought for, perfectly logical in my eyes. So yeah, that's the album, Autistic Legend 2. Fully produced by myself. I'm very proud of it. I hope you enjoy it. If you care enough, but purchase it. Or share it around, you know, share it around mostly. I appreciate that. Stream it. And uh, yeah, okay. I don't know going forward how much music I will be making, but uh, I enjoyed making this album and uh, hope you enjoyed listening to it.